What happens when you combine 3JS with physically correct lighting and materials with a physics engine? Let's see if we can achieve a liquid glass effect. Now we just have the blob. And let's mess around with this material until we get that liquid glass look. There's the material. Let's change this to a mesh physical material. That's where the magic is going to happen. And already it looks like this. Kind of cool. Like milk. Is it more clear now? Yeah. It's kind of ghostly. So check this out. If we make transmission one, it'll make it totally effing clear. And now the thickness. Playing with the thickness is going to give us some nice liquid glass effects. There, now it's like a soap bubble without the um, rainbow. Turn up the thickness to 0.5. Yeah, look at that. Play with the thickness. How can you, as a code artist, work with GitHub Copilot or some LLM to create some generative art? With this generative art prompt, pure black and white, no gray. Let's see how some previous projects I've done will look with this effect, starting with this one. Here's what the original looks like. And here's what it looks like with this effect using a post-processing filter on it. And here's another version of it. This time um, using different post-processing, the bokeh effect, which just effectively gives you a depth of field look. We're going to create a sweet interactive simulation with physics. Come into your animate method and add this mouse ball update and pass in the mouse paws. Now it's tracking it. And our scene looks really messy. Let's turn off the debug view. Whoops, not that one, this one. And let's make that plane, our, our raycast collision plane. I'm calling it mouse plane. Let's make it invisible. Now we're just interacting with these, these guys. Today we're going to destroy this Taurus using TSL. One of the things you can do with this, uh, I want to show you another effect, um, is you can add a, a, a glow and now it really feels like they're being atomized. Isn't that cool? I want to design something that would look good on a t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? This is the project right here. And if you reload, you get a different random composition each time. I've removed the outlines on the primitives because I think this looks less sloppy. And every time we reload, we get a different random composition. Before you dive into 3JS, there are a few essentials you should know. JavaScript skills. Let's talk about JavaScript. It's the core of everything you'll write in 3JS, along with shaders. Understand the shortcut syntax for declaring objects. For example, in this earth vertices, I'm, I'm creating a material here, this points material. The vertex shader and the fragment shader are just kind of floating out here. They don't have a value assigned to them because the value is the same name as the property. Vertex shader, that's the, that's the thing I'm assigning. And fragment shader, that's the thing I'm assigning here. Let me know in the comments what's your least favorite or your most favorite feature of JavaScript or 3JS. Today we're exploring the 3JS animation system and a fireflies effect. We're going to drop an astronaut in there. The astronaut is an FBX file. And if I refresh, I get a different config, maybe one of those little green lights. Nope, re refresh. There's the green one. So there's this, uh, this great fluid effect. Um, it's stunning how easy it is to incorporate these guys. And then close off the effects composer. Let's see. Yeah, we're on dev. Yeah, so there it already works. All I did was import those packages and then drop, drop these tags in to our app. That's it. What are some of the techniques that creative coders use to create cool things like this? 
I think I need either more boxes or bigger boxes. Try to change up some of the things like make this a sphere geometry instead or an icosphere. Let's make them nice and smooth. One comma six. Now they'll be nice spheres. Yeah, so there's that. I don't know if I like this though. Maybe if you uh, kill the color. Starting from here, we're going to build this. I'm calling it MetaCube. What we're exploring today is the use of the instanced mesh, as well as using improved noise to create this beauty. Really cool. But if we, ch if we add this line to update the um, instance color, you'll see this color. Each cube's color changes now. I'll turn off the scale so you can see it more clearly. Right? Today I wanted to explore some variations on one of my favorite projects, physics with Rapier. We're going to add a loaded model. I see that duck floating around in there. We're going to add a bunch of different shapes, lots of different stuff to explore. Let's pump up the, um, or pump down the roughness. I think it's amazing. I love it. I love that color palette. We're taking this scene and we're going to redo it. And instead of using GLSL, we'll use TSL, the 3JS shading language. And this is what it looks like. Um, to show you the difference, what the shader looks like all by itself, looks like this, a bunch of concentric circles. Well, this shader looks like this. It's really just a beautiful rainbow. And that maps to these spheres in this way. And then you animate them and you get a cool effect. Now let's have this guy cast shadows. So mesh dot cast shadows equals true and mesh dot receive shadows equals true. And now we've got shadows and also some weird kind of shading on the boxes as well. Let's turn off the key, the, excuse me, the hemisphere light so we can see it more clearly. These shadows look fine. These not so much. Let's fix those, this bias here, and make it a negative value. I think that did it. That positive value for shadow bias was causing that kind of weird shading. If I just turn the bias off altogether and turn the radius off too, we get nice crisp shadows. So we got a model loaded up, and I can paint on it using decals. The process works like this. Load your model, in this case a bunny, and then you'll set up kind of a, a basic decal. Then you're going to add a ray caster. Ray caster is a simple way to interact with objects in a 3D scene. Hey, we're going to build a web GPU powered post-processing effects pipeline using new TSL nodes like dot screen, RGB shift, pixelization, after image for like trails, bloom, and owl. Okay, I've added the after image and the bloom, starting with the after image pass. I think that speaks for itself. Your hand becomes a controller inside a browser, just like that. We're using 3JS, of course, with media pipe hands and rapier physics. Let's go. So the basic architecture looks like this. You're taking a stream from the webcam, piping it into media pipe. Um, we're creating kinematic colliders using rapier. Wire, uh, connecting those to meshes inside of 3JS to knock stuff around. We render and repeat. That's the basic workflow. The last thing I want to talk about is the debug render. And there you, there you have it. All those points are hints at the, um, the rapier physics bodies that are in the scene. A really handy way to see what's happening in your physics scene. 
we're going to create three scenes and we're going to add physics driven masking and blend them with post processing. We're using the web GPU render. The trick with this one is that we're rendering a scene to a render target that we can use later on. We can combine with the current render. Here's what it looks like. I've got the base scene, the mask, and then the hidden scene or the other scene. I take just the alpha channel for the mask and I use that to combine the main layer with the zombie layer, the hidden layer. Agent assisted creative coding grounded in real JavaScript that you can understand and modify. I removed the reflections from the glass orbs. I like that. I don't know if it's super good though. Hmm. What do you guys think? Thanks so much for coming by and I'll see you in the next one.